all of the holes have had their own specific goals and um, about 98% of the time, as you like, we've been, uh, we've been managing to hit that. Hello and welcome to the Assay TV, where today I am delighted to be joined once again by Tom Pickett. Tom Pickett is the Executive Chairman of Caninda Resources, a company busy exploring across Australia and currently focused on advancing their Copper Gold Mount Caninda project located in Queensland. So welcome, Tom. It's great to have you back with us. Thank you for having me. No problem. So it's been a little while since um, we last spoke. So can you just give us a quick recap uh, on the progress so far at Mount Caninda? Yeah, so, uh, sure. Our, uh, our most recent hole was uh, hole 17, which we were very impressed with um, for, for two reasons. Um, one, or for more than two actually, but one of them was that we, uh, we got a significant intercept of copper, uh, 216 um, metres at 0.7% uh, copper equivalent, which was fantastic to see. But within that, um, as well, there was a high grade gold hit, which uh, is also important in the uh, current climate. So we got six metres at 6.19 grams per tonne gold, which was uh, fantastic to see. So further down um, that hole, we wanted to make sure that we were linking up other areas of interest and it did exactly what we had hoped it would. Uh, and now we're pushing further towards the southwest section in holes uh, 18 uh, and now 19, and we're about 280 metres into hole 19. So uh, it's very much watch this space about the uh, information that we're going to get from the southwest uh, section, um, and we're pretty pleased with what we see so far. Um, so you've mentioned hole 17 and um, how you're linking these results up. What kind of was the orientation and position of that hole relative to the other holes? Sure, yeah, that's um, coming from the uh, further from the uh, northeast, if you like, from, from where the, the current holes are, are situated. Uh, and it's um, linking sort of across areas of interest. So we're making sure that the zones between them uh, have some uh, or are of a robust nature and that hole certainly proved that. Um, it was quite a long hole as well, wasn't it? Um, if I remember from your news releases, um, can you just give us a recap of the different kind of zones in that hole? Sure. Well, from from the uh, from the release, basically we have uh, significant intercepts. If you like, I can run through some some numbers. Um, in terms of uh, gold, we've got um, uh, many meters over uh, one gram per ton within that. Obviously, with um, higher grade copper hits, we've got 55 meters at 0.89 percent copper. Um, so all of those zones that we're seeking to link are, are getting consistent, uh, if you like, in terms of the drilling that we've been doing and the and the resource itself, getting consistent grades across uh, those areas. Excellent. And in your previous announcements as well, you also mentioned some telltale signs of um, a larger porphyry. Does hole 17 still suggest that that's the case? Yeah, we've we've been lucky in the sense that the uh, Mount Caninda project has thrown up some very high grade areas within the Mount Caninda breccia and uh, high grade gold and also high grade um, copper. Um, that has been fantastic um, from early on. So hole three got 493 metres at uh, over 1% uh, copper from surface. So when you've got that sort of high grade zone leading down into uh, a potentially large uh, porphyry system where you get these uh, high tonnage sort of lower grade operations, it's nice to be able to get through that high grade stuff and pay all the way down to, uh, to the more bulk tonnage proposition. Obviously, we'd like to see, you know, 100, 200, 300 million tonnes out of that porphyry underneath us, and we're just going to be investigating that as we go. Excellent. And you um, you mentioned that the holes are linking up. Is hole 17 linking with 15 and 16, which you previously announced in February? Yeah, so we've basically drilled in every single direction. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so we've we've been making sure that the the resource itself uh, has been extending uh, along strike strike both to the north and to the south, uh, and also at depth. So we've been drilling, uh, as I said, in in every different direction. But importantly, we've also come across it uh, in in hole 16, so a uh, hole 14. So we've. We've established there's a significant thickness to it. We've established that it's um, extending further to the southwest in the current holes that we're doing. So all of the holes have had 
their own specific goals. And um, about 98% of the time, as you like, we've been, uh, we've been managing to hit that. Great. And so moving on to hole 18, I know you're awaiting assays for that. Um, but upon visual inspection, could you see any notable mineralization? We're, we've been uh, sort of adopting a system, if you like. So we have the, the geologists that have visual interpretations of it. We then compare that to a, a XRF analysis of the sludges, uh, and then we await the assays. And what we've been seeing over the previous sort of 17 holes is that the geos get it pretty right, um, and the, uh, the sludges are pretty close to the assays. So I'm pretty confident to say that we're liking what we see in, in 18, and uh, it's watch this space. So are you liking what you see? Um, what are the drilling plans moving forward then? Okay, so we'll wrap up hole 19 once we uh, push a bit further down. We're, as I said, only about 280 metres into that one. Uh, and then we will head over likely to uh, a new area, about 500 metres to the east, that we've uh, called Caninda East. Uh, that has had some previous drilling by a company many, many years ago, but it was all very shallow, so sub 100 metres mostly. And uh, there's been some very good gold numbers out of that, but the uh, unfortunately those holes weren't assayed for copper. We could only find one that was assayed for copper, and that had some very good results uh, down to about 30 metres. It was only 65 metres long. So um, with all of that smoke, there's hopefully fire, and we've been pretty good at uh, at finding it so far. So we'll be going over there to have another look and uh, and, and get some good numbers out of that. And well, obviously all of this um, activity takes a lot of funding. And I saw that you raised quite a significant amount in Feb. Um, how much did you raise and what are you going to allocate that to? Yeah, so we uh, we got to about 2.7 million bucks and then we had some in the bank, obviously. So we've been utilising that for drilling. Most of what's important as a junior explorer to, to put all the money into the ground. So we've uh, we've been drilling for a while now. We'll continue to drill. We've got uh, a number of holes planned and we've got obvious funding options for that. Uh, we've got some money in the bank and uh, and we'll continue to do the uh, the great work we've been doing today. Amazing. So just as a final um, thing for our investors, what can they be looking out for in the months to come? I think it's important to understand that um, there's an updated job uh, going to come. We've got to put all of the current data into that. So my resource geologist gets a little bit frustrated because I keep giving him information. Um, yeah. So there's that. There's also we're working on uh, a induced polarization geophysical survey. We're working on an updated metallurgical report. Plus we have a whole bunch of new holes uh, to outline some more significant size at, at Mount Caninda. So there'll be a lot more gold and a lot more copper uh, in uh, news flow to come. It certainly sounds like there's a big few months ahead for Caninda, and we thank you for spending some time with us today. Thanks for having me.